That's not too loud. No, it's fine. Good morning. Good morning on this uh, July 19th, 2020. It's good to see you once again, to uh, be allowed to visit with you, come into your home, your gatherings, watch parties. May the Lord's blessings be upon you and your household. This is the Powerhouse Church of God. Uh, this is our Sunday morning service online. Uh, this is our Youth Sunday. And so Minister Brian Simon will be sharing with us today. Let's pray as we open up. Father, we thank you for yet another opportunity uh, to assemble as the family of God, as the people of God, to uh, give time and attention uh, to the preached word, the teachings of your word, to honor you in our lives. Father, we thank you for the days that we're in. They're indeed challenging days, but we see them as a day and a time and a season for us to draw ever so close to you. Even as we pause in this moment to open up this service, Father, we ask for revival to break loose within the body of Christ, within the family of God. We know that we're in a very uh, opportunistic time to reach hearts and minds and lives for your kingdom. Your word tells us to redeem the time for the days are evil. Take every opportunity to reach souls. So Father, we ask that you use this time and even the reproduction of this message to reach souls that are apart from you. Also use it to build up the body of Christ, the people of God, so that we may become more like you and be light that you have purposed us to be. We ask that in the strong and mighty name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Father, we thank you and we love you today. A good morning again to the Powerhouse Church of God family. Uh, just want to say here right out the, at the outset, we look forward to gathering in our drive-in service next Sunday. And uh, we'll be celebrating together in the Lord's Supper, communion together. Uh, we have at least two candidates for baptism on next Sunday. So let's come excited. And we're looking forward to the same type of uh, service work, ministry work for all of those that helped to make it successful our last month's effort. And so let us come together next Sunday uh, to join together and uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper and bring your second harvest uh, donations as well. That's next Sunday at 10. 1045. That's Sister Simon giving me the proper time for that. <clears throat> Here's our scripture date for today. It's coming from the gospel according to Luke. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It's chapter 6, verse 45. It says, A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of a good heart of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Let's uh, prayerfully anticipate the word today. Minister Brian's going to come uh, with music for our praise and worship, and then he will go into the time of the message. Again, blessings upon your house. Welcome to our house, and may the Lord be glorified in our home. Minister Brian. To God be the glory. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I want to come in and want to encourage everybody today that God is still on the throne. He's not asleep. Now this song here is uh, I was inspired today this morning with I believe it when it talks about the Lord saying he speaks through songs, hymns, 
and spiritual songs. There's nothing wrong with hymns, twenty, uh, 21st century church. There's nothing wrong with hymns. I believe that there, there's a mixture. You ought to have a good mixture of hymns. And this morning I woke up uh, with this, with a hymn in my spirit. It was Andre Crouch hymn that, that still ministers and still rings true. So we're going to open up with that. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. All right. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that my trials only come to make me strong. I've been a lot of places. I've seen so many faces. There have been times I felt so all alone. But in that lonely hour, in that precious lonely hour, Jesus let me know that I was his own. Hallelujah. Oh, it was through it all. Hallelujah. Through it all. I've learned. I've learned to trust in God. Can anybody testify that through through it all, I've learned to depend upon His word. But this is what I do. So I thank God for the mountains, and I thank Him for the valleys, and I thank Him for the storms He's brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know how that he could solve it. And I wouldn't know what faith in his word, hallelujah, can do. This is the reason that I say through it all, through it all, and I've learned to trust, and I've learned to trust. Yes, I've learned to depend. Hallelujah. Have you learned to depend? Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 Is there anybody's testimony today? And through it all, through all the storms yes. and the trials, I've learned. Yes. Has it all been pretty? Has it all been good? Yes. But through it all, as I've learned this before we get into the word today, it's a blessing to know that that, that, that scripture it says it says uh, all things are working together for the good of those yes. that love God and are called according to His purpose. All things. Yes. That's the good, the bad. Things that taste good and the things that don't taste so good. All things. I, I've come to appreciate that as I'm walking with the Lord. All things are working together. Amen. You don't you don't see it in our own fine, small, finite minds, but he's working. Amen. And that's the blessed assurance there to know that God is working on your behalf. Yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. So we're not going to be before you too long, but I do want to. Uh, there is a word from the Lord that the Lord has given me. For such a time as this, uh, let's uh, and, and my, dad, my dad read the scripture. We're going to read it again, yeah. and then we're going to go right in. Text scripture Luke six forty five. He said, and NIV says, "A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil that's stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of." 
And if for a moment in time here, I want to share from this topic and be praying for men with me. A change of heart. And if I have a subtopic, it would be entitled, It's an Inside Job. Mm -hmm. A change of heart. It, in subtitle, It's an Inside Job. Uh, just want to share with the intro. Uh, the Lord was dealing with me just uh, as I've been walking through this, this journey, as we all have been walking through this season, pandemic season with systemic racism, all this going on. The Lord's allowing all this, to, I believe, to uncover some things that, 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 that need to be dealt with, even in the church. Amen. Amen. Uh, he's allowed these things to happen. And if, if, we're, if we're true believers, we do have a heart. We have, a, we see, we see, we, we're seeing these things, and it should disturb us when we're seeing these things going on. And so I was, and I'll be honest. Yes, we, we expect the world to be the world. I'll say it again. You expect the world to act like the world, yes. to do worldly things, because they're in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what the law was dealing with me, I, and I, I, I struggle with this. That it's a challenge when you see those same things in the church. And I'm going to, I have to be obedient to what the Lord placed in my heart. And I, I sought the Lord because it, it troubled me to see racism, systemic racism in the church. It troubled me to see these things in the house of God. The body of believers, to see this all infiltrated across the board in the church. Know the bus that proclaim to know the name Name of the Lord. We, 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 Jesus is our Savior and Lord, but yet we can't worship together because they don't look like us. Mm -hmm. I want to put it right here. Because we got, I got some scripture to back me up. But I want the intro, get you in the mind and, and thoughts of, of that, that topic, the change of heart. So the good man, it speaks from the treasury. Well, what's in there, in the heart? An evil man speaks from the treasury. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart in another place, the mouth speaks. All right, we're going to get right into it. Uh, and then I have a, there's, there's two words that we want to go, go over, like a little word study, and then we'll, you'll see where they fit in. I uh, want to go for the first word. And the first word is, and is, uh, is a hip, it's called is a hypocrite. We know that word. Hypocrite is a person who pretends to have virtue moral, religious beliefs, and principles that he or she does actually does not possess. Okay. I'll say that again. They pretend. Mm -hmm. That's a hypocrite. I'm reading this Webster's definition. And we'll, we'll see where it fits in in the sermon as we go along. But hypocrite is one who pretends to have virtues, pretends to have morals, but does not actually possess them. All right? And, and, and just to make that plain, because what are you talking about, preacher? One who walks the walk. Mm -hmm. Or one who talks the talk, but doesn't walk the walk. My God. We've, we've all been around folks like that. But it's a sad story to tell when you see these things in the church. My Lord. Once again, you expect the world to act like the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. But the church ought to be different. Amen. Amen. Not talking about the edifice. Because we are the church. Amen. Believers ought to be acting different. Come on, preacher. They ought to see, if they, if they don't see love from anywhere else, mm -hmm. they ought to see love from somebody that professes to know Jesus. Yes. Yes. All right? And then the next thing we'll say, a uh, Samaritan, definition of a Samaritan. In the Bible was a person from Samaria, the region of the north Jerusalem, and Jesus' day, Jewish people of Galilee and Judea Shun the Samaritans. They, they, they shun them. That's just a biblical, old school biblical word. Hey, they, 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 they didn't like them. They, they, they shied away from them. They were like outcasts. The Samaritans were outcasts. They were considered a mixed breed, a mixed breed, a mixed race that practiced an impure, half pagan religion. They're not one of us. So we can't fellowship with them, right? So, so now, now that my intro is there, now we're going to get into the word. I know y'all was waiting on that. Hey, when are you going to get into the word? <laughs> hey, 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 I'm, I'm going to get into the word. Because, uh, hey, hey, look, the word is what changes life. Amen. 
I'm, I'm just a vessel. Amen. All right, so now let's get into the word. The word on today is a familiar passage, the parable of the good Samaritan, which is what we're going to do on today. Uh, give, give, give me a moment here because uh, my uh, my phone, they we're going to get it together here. There we go. Now, now we're good now. There we go. All right, we're good now. So now, Luke 10, 25, verses 20, 25 through 37. The parable of the Good Samaritan. One occasion, on one occasion, an expert in law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked. And let me say the expert of the law. He's supposed to know. He knew the word. He was in church. No, knew everything. So, so he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And he replied, he said, what, what is written in the law? He replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this. What's this? Well, we just read. And you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. He still didn't understand. What do you mean? So Jesus, in his normal way, he gave a parable that painted a picture that made it all clear. So he said, when any question, Jesus, he asked Jesus, who's my neighbor? So in reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Priest, a priest, the would be equivalent to the pastor, church. Is somebody who in charge, priest, one of the ones that proclaim, right? He was a shepherd. He happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he, the Bible didn't say that he didn't see him. He saw the man hurt him. But his decision, he passed on by on the other side. Ain't my problem. I don't know him. I don't know the man. He ain't kidding to me. You don't go to my church. I'm going to go there. You don't look like me. I'm going on the other side. All right, but I was not done yet. So the Levite church, uh, once again, church, a church, a church affiliate. He's one, he, was, he was in charge of the church. He, he made sure everything in the church ran right, right? right? Levite. When he came to the place and saw him, they both saw him. <laughs> they both saw the man hurt him but passed by on the other side. Mm. All right, now we came to Samaritan. We talked about what a Samaritan, he was outcast, right? He was he was the one that everybody shunned. My God. Oh, he's a Samaritan. Don't fellowship with him. Don't worship with him. He don't look like us. My God. That man right there said, as he traveled, he came to where he was. Saw the difference. He saw it, but he came where he was. What if the church got back to meeting people right where they are? Amen. What if we started reaching out to folks, not, not, not sticking our nose up at them, but reaching out to them, even if they don't look like us? Come on now. Even if, when they don't meet, they may not worship the way we worship. Yes, yes. But meet them right where they are. Because we all are children of God if we know Jesus. Yes. We know Jesus and profess him as our Lord and Savior, no matter if you're Chinese or Spanish. Or, or, or black, white, German. If you profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are a believer. Amen. And confess it with your mouth. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. No matter what race you are, we ought to be able to worship together because we, we praise the same God. We believe that Jesus is Lord. Let's worship together. So anyhow, Samaritan came. And he said he took pity on him took pity on him. He didn't know the man, but he saw him hurting. Amen. Took pity on him and went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. He fixed him up. And this is stuff that came off of, this is something that the Lord blessed him with. But he saw somebody in need, in need, so he helped him. But this is the part I love right here. Then he put the man on his own donkey. <laughs> Why did the Bible say that? On his own donkey. That's like, well, now we don't ride on donkeys much in this area. But we, we put it in 2020. He put him in his own car. Mm -hmm. He put him in his own mode of transportation. 
And then he took him to the hotel. It says here, it says brought him to the end and took care of him. And next day he took out two denarii, I gave him to the innkeeper, look after him. And when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think, Jesus asked him, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus said, go and do likewise. Amen. So we're going to go to the next scripture. But I want to uh, point out something. As belief, again, we said the good, a good man uh, shares and speaks from what's on the inside. A good man. It says believers, we're supposed to see the hurt. Even if they don't look like you, even if they don't come from they don't they don't they don't come to the same neighborhood as you, even if they don't go to the same church as you. Hey, that's a brother that's hurting. He may not be kin to me, but he's hurting. As a believer, there's a C word that we're gonna talk about compassion. Show compassion for the brothers and sisters that are hurting, even if they don't look like you. In this day and time, that's what we're lacking. We see brothers and sisters who may be a different shade that are hurting, going through a storm. Hey, that's not my problem. Mm -hmm. That's not my problem. I am this race, and I'm that race. That's not my problem. I don't fellowship with them. I, I, that's not, not, they're not in my genetic um, make up there. Uh, no, I, I don't. That's not me. That's not. That's not what uh, what Jesus said. Jesus said. Jesus said, "Love the Lord your God, all your heart, all your mind, all your soul." And then he says, "Love your neighbor as yourself." Amen. Newsflash: the neighbor is not somebody that just stays right next door to you. That, that's that's one neighbor. But a neighbor, the one that's in pro close proximity of you. Anybody that that's that's near you, that's around you. That's your neighbor. Amen. That's your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. This, we got to make this thing clear. As believers, we want to be a side. No, let me park right here mm -hmm. and say this. That, that, that we, want, we were called to be a witness. What kind of witness okay. are we? What kind of testimony are we when we can't love our brothers and sisters of a different shade in the church? The world's looking into the church and they see division in the church. How can we win a soul? If, if we can't show unity in the church, we pre uh, preach yes. unity, but we can't have unity in the church. Oh this is the way the Lord has placed it in my heart, so I got to only can share it the way he gave it to me. The next, next scripture, we're going to go to Matthew mm -hmm. chapter 23. And we, we, we're turning the corner now. Matthew 20, chapter 23, verses 25 through 27. Jesus was speaking to the Pharisees, right? These are the ones that, that know the word on the, in the church, in the church setting. They, they, they know the word, right? right? Backwards and forwards, right? Mm -hmm. This is Jesus was talking to him. But look how he says it. He comes to him. He starts off, woe to you. He's talking to the church folk. Mm -hmm. Woe. And if you do it, you say, I'm going to research it. I'm not going to go too far. But it, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's like a all caps. should be written in all caps. <laughs> It's a warning. It, it, it should, should have flashing lights right there. It, you know, whoa, when Jesus says, whoa, that, 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 whoa to you. Hold up, wait a minute. All you, but then look, teachers of the law, Pharisees, and you, look at that word. We just, we did it worse, that hypocrites. Those that pretend, we said, to be moral and all these things, but, but they don't walk it. They're not walking it. They pretend. They put on a facade. They put on their Sunday best every morning, every time, to make you believe that all is well. But, but, but when you see them walking and talking, they're not adding, it's not adding up. You clean. But this is the part that, that jumped out to me when I was reading and studying. You clean the outside of the cup and dish so that you can look good. But inside, they're full of greed. And self-indulgence. This is the church. These are the people that are supposed to know the word, right? Oh, they proclaim. They put on a show. Mm. The outside looks good. Jesus. The outside looks churchy. <laughs> the outside looks. My God. But the inside is jacked up. Oh. And then 26 says, blind Pharisee. My God. First, this Jesus is giving instruction. 
You need to clean the inside of the cup yes, sir. and dish. Then the outside will also be clean. Amen. Clean the inside first. Mm -hmm. And then the outside will be clean. But, but then he says, woe to you again. There's that word again. Teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Mm -hmm. You are like, this is the one, a whitewashed tomb. Outside, you shine them up real good. You clean it, use whatever cleaner you need. Mm. Looks good on the outside, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of dead, of the dead and everything unclean. Wow. Don't let this be a testimony of us wow. as believers. But this is what you're seeing now. Mm. I believe the Lord allowed the pandemic and all these different things to expose those things that need changing. I believe it with all my heart Amen. that we need to stop doing church as usual. Mm -hmm. We need to seek God. Lord, 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 change my heart, oh God. Lord, I don't want to be just going through the motions. Here it is. He said these people in church here, it says these hypocrites, call them hypocrites because you have an outside performance. Your outside presentation does not match the inside. You, you, you're, you're promoting these things. Say, oh, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. And then let me just place this. And, and the Lord, once again, I got to give it like the Lord gives it to me. He said, you can't hold Jesus in one hand and a hangman's noose, hangman's noose in the other. You can't hold Jesus in one hand and a Confederate flag in the other. Right. You can't hold Jesus in one hand and say that you can that you can say, oh, oh I, I just don't like that other race. Uh -huh. You can't do it. We just declared that you got to love your neighbor as yourself. That's the word said. Jesus said you cannot do that. You get it's it's it's, it's, it's you're being a hypocrite. You're being a hypocrite when you say one thing and do another. How can we be a witness when we say one thing and do another? Anywhere else in life, that, that, that you, you can't be effective anywhere else. And, but somehow we think that we get a pass in the, in the body of Christ. Anywhere else, if you say one thing and do another, you won't be anywhere. If you go on a job and say you won't be there and don't show up, you can keep a system of that, those things, you won't, you'll be out of a job. If you say you're going to be a jury duty and don't show up, you're going to have some problems. If, if, you, if you have... If you get a ticket, I can testify to this, and, and you forget, years go by, and you forget that you had a warrant out for your arrest, and you don't show up, they're going to come find you. Amen. Because you didn't show up. You were supposed to show up, you didn't show up. Anywhere else. Hey, that, that's a problem. Why in the body of Christ we think we get a pass? All right, now we're going we're gonna, to we expose that. Now let, let's get to the good news. Let's get to the good stuff right here. But now, Colossians 3, verse 12 through 17. Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Here's the instruction. So we presented the problem that we're seeing in the world. But now here's, 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 here's what can help us now. We presented the problem that, that's evident in the world today. But now let's, this, is what, this, this, is the, this is the answer here. Therefore, as God's chosen people, who's that? The believers, Right? Those that profess to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Here's some instruction. Holy and dearly loved. God loves us. Yes, he does. Clothe yourselves. Put on. Mm. Compassion. Whoa. Mm. Compassion. What we talked about in, 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 the, in the former passage of Scripture, we talked about the parable of the Good Samaritan. Seeing somebody hurt. And compassion. Those, kindness. Humility. Not thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to. This is what we got to as God's chosen people. This is what we should be wearing. I, mean, I believe it was a message. The message version said this called it God's wardrobe. <laughs> know. We ought to put it on. This is, put on humility. Put on gentleness. Yes. God's chosen people. This is the kind of stuff we should be wearing. Put on patience. Woo. Yes. Lord is dealing with me with that. <laughs> patience every day. Put it on. This is what you should be wearing. Amen. And here it is. This is it. We're still talking about what we're supposed to be wearing. Bear with each other. Bear with them. And forgive one another if any of you 
has a grievance against someone. This is what we should be wearing. As believers, this is what we should be wearing. As believers. And, and, and I'll say this, that I will stay right here. If you find yourself, believer, in that place where you're holding Jesus in one hand and Confederate flag in the other, if you find yourself in that place, it's not the end, amen. Because truth of the matter, note that Jesus said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just amen. to forgive us. But if you keep them secret and keep them hidden, and Jesus, hey, hey, he can't, he can't forgive that because you're not, you're not presenting him to him. You got to confess him. Lord, it's me. I've been thinking this way for much too long and it's not lining up with the word. Forgive me, Lord. Bring it to him. And he said he's faithful and just. Amen. Faithful and just. And over all these virtues, put on love. Oh, amen. amen. Why? Because God is love. Put on love, which binds them all together. This is, this is the glue that keeps them all together. You can be doing all these things. And if you do it outside of love, this is what it says. It says you need love. In another place, they talk about love being the, 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 that, that's, that's the defining force. You can do all these things. If you don't have love, it doesn't mean a thing. This is what God is saying in his hour. It binds them all together in perfect unity. Then let the peace of God, a peace of Christ, rule in your hearts. Let the peace of Christ, once you put all those on, all those things, now you let the peace of Christ rule. Rule. Let it, let, let it rule. It. Let, let it take charge. Let it govern your hearts. Since the members of one body, were, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Not called to mess, but called to peace. Amen. Not called to strife, but called to peace. Hallelujah. Not called to, to division, but called to peace. That's what we're called to do. I mean, I'm still in the word. And be thankful. I'm thankful for the hills and valleys. Lord, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and and, and spiritual songs from the spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, Amen. do it all yes. in the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. That's what we should be having on. Now, lastly, lastly now, and I'm, like I said, I wasn't going to be long. Now, we read that scripture. That's for the believers. But, but how? How do we get there? I'm glad you asked. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. And it says this. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God had raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Right. Simplicity of the gospel. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. All right, we're going to come to a close here, but the topic of the message here was the change of heart. It's an inside job. Yes. The scripture says that, that the only way that your heart can be changed if you allow Jesus in. I, I, I can hear very clearly David in, in his Psalm 51, where he said, created me. Lord, a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, Lord. And saying that the heart I have right now is dirty. The heart I have right now is selfish. The heart I have right now is filled with all kinds of junk that you're not pleased, to, pleased with. Lord, create in me a clean heart. And the part I like right here is renew the right spirit yeah. within. Yeah. Because that lets me know that sometimes we have the wrong spirits within us. We can have the spirit of division, spirit of, of, of racism, spirit of, uh, uh, of hate, spirit of greed, spirit of pride. We can have all these spirits in, in us. So David, man of the God's own heart, might I add, asked, Lord, renew the right spirit. A spirit of what we just call uh, compassion. What's the right spirit, brother? Spirit of love, spirit of forgiveness. That's the right spirit. A spirit of long-suffering, spirit of patience, yes. spirit of love, 
That's the right spirit. And in closing, we're going to pray right now. Lord, for, Lord, renew the right spirit. Yes. Clean our hearts. You, Lord, you see what's going on, just like we see it. Yes, Lord, Lord we, Lord, we pray for a change. Yes. We pray, Lord, that you would replace the heart of stone with the heart of flesh. Yes. Lord, you see what's going on, and you're not pleased with it. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, bring the church back to being a church. Lord, a church. Lord, we know, Lord, that, that in heaven, in newsflash, that in heaven, there's not going to be a white side and a black side. In heaven, there's not going to be a German side and a Dutch side. In heaven, there's not going to be a Chinese side and a Spanish side. No, when I read the Bible, and, and, and when if, if you read the Bible, you'll make you a better Christian. If you read the Bible, you become more astute. That's why I believe the Bible says study to show yourself approved. Amen. And get in the word yourself. The Bible says nothing about races being divided in, the, in heaven. But it says we'll all be dressed up in white. The corruptible shall put on incorruptible. Right? The mortal shall put on immortal. We'll all be dressed in white. The Bible it makes no division uh, about, it said all, the only requirement is what I just read. If we confess Amen. the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, your name is written in the last book of life. Amen. Amen. I want to, I, I believe the Lord, well, part, of the, part of being the light is exposing. Amen. And that's what I believe, and the Lord put him out there, you're exposing, exposing this, 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 uh, is, uh, we call a pandemic COVID, but I believe racism, is, racism has been a pandemic going on for much too long. Mm. It's invisible. Now, we can't always can't see it out. Like, you can't see COVID, but you see the effects of it. All right. I'll say that again. There are particles that you cannot see with your own visual. Eye. You might not be able to see it, but you can see the effects. That's it. You can witness the effects mm. on the news. You witness the effects. Sometimes even in our families, even in our church families, you witness it. It's out there. Lord, change our hearts. But it's a household of faith. Mm -hmm. The Lord is saying it's high time that we clean up. It's high time that we clean up. Clean house. Clean house because Jesus is coming back. Yes, it's time to clean house. Clean house. When we know somebody is coming. We know that we have family coming, right? We got to clean up because we don't want them to come. We don't want them to come and see a messy house. We don't want them to come see junk everywhere. So what do we do? We know when we have a family get together, we, we, we're mopping the floors, we're sweeping, we're getting all the junk together, we're cleaning up, make sure we, it smells good, make sure it looks good. Hey, because we have company coming. And we don't want to look. We don't want to give a bad representation, but let me let me make it plain, and then we're going we're going to pray. Jesus is coming back. Yes. There's no qualms about it. No, no, that's not a myth. It's not a fairy tale. Jesus is coming back, Amen. and He's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Yes, sir. That's the Bible. And in order to be a church without spot or wrinkle. We have to be open for his examination in our lives. We got to search me, O oh Lord. When you show me what's wrong, Lord, help me to change it, not, not to let, allow pride to get in the way. Lord, I want to be more like you every day. So when you show me areas of working, I'm jumping on it to fix it. Lord, Lord, you show me that. I'm dealing with it. You show me that. I'm not going to uh, walk, walk along any long, go along any longer in this hypocritical phase. I'm not going to go along in this performing phase. Lord, I want to be I want to be an authentic Christian, a Christian that represents by myself and in public, Amen. in my family and in the church house, yes, yes. in the church and in the workplace, in my neighborhood, not just in one central area, but everywhere. Amen. That's what Jesus is. That that that's why I believe that that's the church without blemish. When we're walking the walk in every in every 
in every avenue, in every venue of our life. There's no place that God doesn't touch. There's no place where he should should not should not be well. Well, hey, look, God should be welcome in every place in our life. Amen. And if there's a room, and, and let's go back to the house analogy. And when we're cleaning up, man, now all of us we clean, we we, we clean, but then we also have that room that we're not going to touch. <laughs> we have that room that when we're cleaning, and we don't feel like doing it, no, doing that with it, but we want, don't want them to come there. We don't feel that like we didn't get time to clean, so. But we keep that door locked or we keep it closed because yeah. we don't want them to go in there because we still got some junk in there. Storage, yeah. We got some storage area. We still got some stuff in there. We don't want them to go in there because it's, it's not clean. My God. How many of us are like that in, in, with, with, with the Lord? Jeez. We got everything else clean. We don't deal with that room. Lord, Lord just bypass that room or bypass this room or bypass that room, Lord. Dear God. But everything else, you can come in and see everything else, Lord. But just, oh, just, just, just bypass that room. God says, I want all of you. Amen. If you don't hear anything else, I want all of you. I want your heart. Amen. The only way, and the Lord, the clearest thing, because to answer the question, because I remember I shared with you about how I was questioning this, this moment in time, this observation. He said, it's an inside job. Mm. The change of heart comes when surrender comes. Amen. When we open up our hearts Amen. to the Lord. Allow him to expose those things yes. that are not like him. So, so I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to get out the way. But my prayer is that this message hits home. If you hear the God, God say, it's time to change. If you find yourself in that place, the Pharisee's place, it's not the end. But know that 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 in the day the that you hear God's voice, don't harden your heart. Yeah. In the day that you hear the instruction, don't look the other way. Yeah. But adhere and, and hasten yourself to his throne. Run to him and say, Lord, touch me. Lord, hear me. Yeah. So we're going to pray. You, Lord, we thank you. Yeah. Lord, we love you. Yeah. We honor your name. We honor your word. We honor, your, we honor everything about you. You are great and greatly to be praised. There's none like you in all the earth. Lord, we pray that you mend hearts, that you touch hearts, that you change hearts. Lord, Lord, we need a heart change. We need a heart transplant, Lord. Lord, 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 clean our hearts up. Lord, create in us a clean heart, a heart that loves like you, forgives like you. Lord, 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 is patient like you. Lord, Lord, help us, Lord. Bring us, bring us to that place, Lord, as, as we open up and surrender ourselves to your will and way. Lord, we want to be imitators of you, Lord. Lord, Lord, we step out of the way. Lord, we speak against pride, self-righteousness. Lord, we, 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 Lord, we, we are asking, Lord, that you bring about a hum humble spirit, Lord. Lord, a spirit of humility. Renew the right spirit. A spirit of humility, Lord. A spirit of gentleness. A spirit of compassion. Renew the right spirit within us, Lord. Renew the right spirit, Lord, so that we can so we can be a better representation in, in the world today of, 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 what, of, of what a true Christian looks like. So we can be a better representation of what, what God's love looks like. What God's forgiveness, what God's, what, what salvation looks like. Oh, Lord, Lord, can we be a better, Lord, help us to be a better representation to the world today. We're ambassadors of your kingdom, Lord. Help us not to give a false representation. Amen. Lord, we want, to, we want to represent you right in the world today. Help us. Forgive us when we've, when we've fallen short. Forgive us when we've thought the wrong thing, said the wrong thing, done the wrong thing participated in the wrong thing. Yes, yes. Lord, believed in the wrong thing. Help us. Supported the wrong thing. Help us. Forgive us. Lord, is our prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord, and as your word says, your promises are yes and amen. You said if we, if we confess our sins, yes. say you're faithful and just. Yes. Lord, forgive us. Lord, we want, we want to be more like you. Said if my people were called by my name, shall humble themselves. Seek my face. Turn from your wicked ways. Then you'll hear from heaven. 
forgive sins, and heal our land. Lord, heal our land today. Amen. Our land needs healing. Amen. We ask all these things in your son Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. What an awesome and powerful word. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. While sitting and listening and responding uh, to this word, uh, listening to my son speak from the heart of God, uh, it's very inspirational to me. And it's also and I find myself doing Subscribe this. Subscribe in the listening. mobile app for multi chat worship when music I'm for your listening. music today. We got a little background music going on. Uh, I find that when I hear the word of God and I sit under preaching, even my son's preaching, uh, I do a, an inspection. And I want to uh, encourage you to do likewise when you hear the word of God. And that is uh, to listen as God is speaking to us. So this word, uh, a change of heart, it's an inside job. Look where God is touching something in your own life, in my own life, and repent. I shared several messages uh, ago about uh, learning how to return to the Lord when we sense that we've been away from him and repent change the way we're thinking. This is an opportune time for the church of the living God. Revival. Let's pray for revival. And revival begins with each one of us coming alive again in our faith, coming alive again in our walk with God, coming alive in our family life. The foundation of the church is family. And so let us return to God. Inspect our hearts. Pray, as David says, search me, O Lord. Search my heart and see if there be any wicked way, any contrary way, any hypocritical way that's in my soul. So let that be our prayer today. Pray for one another. Well, let's remember the old saying that said, it's not my brother, not my sister. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Let's get right with God first. Then we can better minister to the needs of others. God bless you and keep you today. Let's carry out the rest of this day being ministers God's love and grace and being ready and responsive in ministering to our neighbors. To God be the glory. Brian's going to close us out with song. And again, we love you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next Sunday in our drive-in service, 1030. Sister Simon just reminded me. One hour, 1030 to 1130. We're going to we're going to worship together. We're going to celebrate baptism together. We're going to celebrate communion together. We're going to celebrate gathering in the presence of God together for one hour. Uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, we'll see you in other gatherings that we have this week on our Wednesday Bible study. And we are planning to have, uh, we're preparing to have Sunday school online and several other types of discussion areas. So look forward to more information there. To God be the glory. Amen. God bless. Brian, come close us out. Talk. <clears throat> Subscribe in the mobile app for multi-chat worship music for your ministry today. You gotta get the subscription. Time out for that free stuff. <laughs> can stand against the law. Yes. No one can. No one will. Who 
can stand against our king no one can no one will oh oh victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him whoa whoa victory belongs to jesus victory belongs to him who can stand come on lift that up no one no one who can stand against the king? No one can. No one will. And we sing, oh, 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 victory, victory belongs, yeah. Victory belongs. Hallelujah. Come on, lift that up right there, where we are. Victory belongs. Oh, it belongs to him. Jesus. Subscribe to the Lord. So we put our trust in And we put our hope in You You will deliver You are yours And I find Hallelujah Forever victorious Forever we will I find my victory Hallelujah Can anybody testify to that? Hallelujah You are me. You are I find Hallelujah Forever victor Forever we win
Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's giving you the victory. For this is the victory that overcomes the world. These are not faith. You got to believe that today. Walk in your victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. I guess we're going to have to get us a subscription to that. <laughs> Y'all have a blessed rest of the day. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to donate something to Minister Brian so he can buy, buy that app so that they won't have to keep reminding him that he's been, he's been drawing from that free app for a while. Y'all have a blessed rest of the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, I was there the first time. I was.